Hello students, welcome to your second PUC NCRT Biology Practical Sessions. In today's session, we will be studying about texture of soil. So, for this purpose, you can see here there is a sieve tube. So, you have to take almost about 300 to 500 grams of soil sample and completely dry them. Once it is dried, then you have to pass into the sieve tube what you can see here. So, these sieve tube contains mesh of different sizes. Once it passes on to the sieve tube, the different sized granules or different sized soil particles get separated in different layers of this sieve tube. Once it is done, place it as it is. What is the reason of separating them is we can easily identify the soil which has what proportion of slit, what proportion of sand and what proportion of clay in them. The sieve tube helps us in getting the proper proportion of the clay slits as well as sand in a particular soil what you have taken. In the next diagram what you can see is a triangle. This is called a soil texture triangle. So, this triangle is a method of identifying the percentage of composition of slit, sand as well as clay present in the soil of your choice. So, that is how based on the sieve tube you separate the soil and based on this particular soil texture triangle you can get the exact percentage of three different components of soil that will be slit, clay as well as sand. So, that is about different texture of soil what can be measured. This experiment can be done for different types of soil, maybe garden soil, roadside soil, agricultural land soil, different soil. So, to measure exactly what are the composition of three different clay, slit and sand components in them. That is all in today's session. Thank you. Hello students, welcome to your second PUC NCRT biology practical session. In today's session, we will be learning about the water holding capacity in case of soil. When it comes to the diagram, you can see in the screen that for this experiment, we require soil sample, a measured 100 gram measured soil sample from two different locations, maybe a garden soil, a road soil, a clay soil or a sandy soil. So, you have to take any two of the soils for your experiment. So, measure them, weigh them up to 100 grams, sun dry them and place it aside. Take two measuring jars what you can see on the screen here. Take two clean measuring jars, two funnels, muslin cloth or a filter paper. So, place these measuring jar, filter paper as well as the funnel as you can see in the screen. Once it is placed, pour this 100 gram of soil into each of the funnel and label the measuring jar as A and B. After this setup, add 100 ml of water to each of the soil samples. So, once you add 100 ml of water, the soil will start to absorb some amount of water and start to release some amount of water. That can be seen in the funnel which keeps on dripping the water in both of the measuring jars. After all the process, keep it aside as it is. After a while, make sure that the dripping has completely stopped and in the measuring jar, you have got collected some amount of water. Measure the amount of water collected in the measuring jar. You can make out that which soil has the high ability to hold the water and which soil has less ability. So, this particular section is called porosity. When the soil granules are tightly packed, their water holding capacity will be more and their porosity will be less. When the soil particles or granules are loosely arranged, their porosity will be very high and water holding capacity will be very much less. So, the beaker which has large amount of water indicate the measuring jar which has large amount of water collected indicates that the water holding capacity of that particular soil is less and their porosity is very much high. So, higher the porosity, it is not suitable for agriculture. In the measuring jar which has lesser amount of 
water you can say that the porosity is less as well as the water holding capacity is very high indicating that that particular soil is suitable for agricultural purpose. So that is all about water holding capacity in different soil samples which you have studied in today's practical session. Thank you. Hello students, welcome to your second PUC biology practical session. In today's session, we will be studying about turbidity of water. For this experiment, what you have to do is, you have to collect 500 ml of water samples from different areas like lake, pond, well, etc. So, the collected 500 ml of water is placed in a measuring jar which you will be labeling A and B. So, you have to collect the water samples from any two region what I have mentioned. So, once the measuring jar is filled with 500 ml of water as I have told it should be labeled A and B and the measuring jars should be placed as it is without moving overnight without disturbing that is undisturbed it should remain in the same way for overnight. So, in the screen what you can see is the undisturbed measuring jar that is A and B which has been placed as it is overnight. So, by placing this undisturbed for overnight what happens is the amount of sediment what is present in the water sample what is collected it gets collected at the base of the measuring jar. So, the based on the amount of sediment collected at the bottom of the water, the water can be identified as either turbid, semi turbid or clear. More sediments collected at the base of the measuring jar indicates that the water sample is a turbid one. So, lesser or clear indicates that it is a semi turbid or a clear water. Based on turbidity of water, we can make sure that whether the water is suitable for consumption or not. More the turbidity, then the water is not suitable for consumption and clear the water, it is very much suitable for consumption. That is all in this session. Thank you.